Welcome, everyone. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are ready to learn some English. Today, we are going to talk about advanced English words. And we are going to dive down into verbs. Verbs. Maybe we should first talk about what verbs are. Verbs are those action words, those things that you do. So we will talk about some very advanced ones. Would like to say hello to a couple people, though, before we get started. Williams is here. He is from Argentina. Mahmoud is here. He is from Mauritania. I saw Freddie Wolf somewhere back there. He's from France. Hope everyone is doing well today. Got some people coming in from Facebook. Hey, if you want to follow me on YouTube, we do chat a little bit before the English lesson starts. For some reason, Facebook does not allow that, but we are live here. We are live here. Emmanuel, yeah, I just got back from New York, so we arrived back in, in town on Thursday. So I was home all day yesterday, prepared this lesson. Amina's here. Glad she could uh, join us. Sometimes she's working up in Canada. Sometimes she's shopping. Saw Anya here. Germany's in the house. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's do this. The big escape is here. What's going on? Elaine, how are you? All right, so we are talking about verbs, advanced verbs. These are verbs that can take your conversation to the next level. You will be able to express yourself a little bit better. You will understand what native English speakers are talking about just that much better. And there is the thumbnail. And somebody in the comments said, is that what Brent looked like 10 years ago? No, no, I never, that, that is what a computer thinks I might look like. No, I've never looked that good. That stare off into the distance. But this is a live English lesson. We are live. Maybe you are watching on replay. If you are, hello. Maybe you are listening on the podcast. I will try not to forget about you because we have a lot of pictures that I think will help. But if you're listening, you can't see those pictures. So I will try to describe them. Laos is in the house. What? No way. The Galapagos Islands? Welcome. Made famous by Darwin. Nice. Love it. All right. So the topic today, great question. If you're just joining us, it's advanced English verbs. Those words in English that make you do something. So talk jump. Those are basic. We are going advanced today. So Tanya could not join us today, unfortunately, but she did leave a super sticker. So I would like to thank her for that. And it seems like she might not be able to join us for the next couple, couple live lessons. I try to do one of these each week. So thank you so much, Tanya. From Germany. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. All right. Let's start with our first verb here. And that verb is swarm. Swarm. I am hoping nobody knows this verb, but it can be very helpful to describe what you want to say. Of course, nothing in English is simple. Swarm is one of those words that can be a noun or it can be a verb. A noun in English is a person, place, or thing. So let's talk about the noun first. Yes, I know this is an English lesson about verbs, but let's just talk about the noun first. A swarm is a group of flying bugs. Most commonly, bees. Okay, so it is a noun. And in that picture, you can see, well, it looks like 
there is a group of bees there. So you can call that group of bees a swarm. And when we get to the verb, it might make sense because a lot of times those flying insects will move in the same direction. And that is what the verb swarm means. Now, I'm going to use a sentence right here that has both the noun form and the verb form. This might not be a great sentence, but it will have both forms of the word in it. And if you would like to practice shadowing, you can read this sentence along with me, or you can pause the lesson after I read and then read it yourself. A swarm of bees swarmed around the beehive. A swarm of bees swarmed around the beehive. Just in case you don't know what a beehive is, I thought we could do a little mini lesson on bees. In the picture, that is a beehive. If you are listening to the podcast, a beehive is where bees live. Sometimes you will hear it called a hive. So one more time, a swarm of bees swarmed around the hive. Let's get a definition for the verb swarm. Swarm as a verb means a bunch of things moving at once in the same direction. So let's say, oh, I did go to New York recently. I did go to New York. Maybe you saw that English lesson where I toured my hotel. Well, outside of my hotel, there was some screaming, good screaming. But a Broadway play just ended. And some of the actors in the play came out to say hello to people who watched that play. And those people swarmed the actors. So all of the people who were fans of that play, when the actors came out, the people swarmed around them. I have another sentence for you. Let's see this picture here. Oh, hang on. Did you know in that picture, that's a beekeeper. I thought maybe when is another time that I will be able to talk about beekeepers that person they have a screen over their face it looks like they are gathering honey from a hive gather that's a good advanced word gather collect a bunch of things maybe at the end of your english class you gather all of your belongings you get your pencils you get your pen you get your notebook you get your purse, you gather your belongings before you leave. That's a beekeeper. But how about this? The police. I hope everyone knows the police. Let's use swarm with the police. And hopefully you know criminal. Those are bad people. Those are people who break the rules. The police swarmed the criminal. So maybe there were five or six police officers and they just all go in the same direction towards the criminal to try to stop them. One more story from New York, because this is true. This happened. Jamie, my wife, my lovely wife, if she is watching, Jamie and I were walking in Times Square. My daughter was at a Broadway play, Broadway musical, and we saw this man running and another one was running after him. And Jamie heard this man stabbed my friend stabbed. That's an advanced verb. Um, it means to take a knife and plunge it into something plunge. That's another good advanced verb. So we were walking in that direction. We thought, Oh no, what's going to happen here? And out of nowhere, the police swarmed 
on this guy. They surrounded him and they arrested him. So that's what made me think of the police swarming. Fans could swarm around an actor. Hope that helps a lot about that first verb swarm. Let's check the chat. See how things are going. Aroni is here. He is in the YouTube chat making things, making sure things go right. All right. Um, if you do have a question that you want to make sure I don't miss, there is a link in the description and you can answer, ask, you can ask your questions there. And I promise I will answer them. That's one way you can make sure I never missed your question. You could also super chat. I won't miss that either. All right. Um, hang on, hang on. Um, Freddie, please, oh, please swap away the, the swarm quickly. You can't stand it. You're afraid of wasps? Uh oh, hey, hang on. Avert your eyes. That is another advanced verb. Avert. Don't look at it. We're going to talk about a couple ways you can look later on in the lesson. Glance. Yeah, don't glance this way. Freddie, I'm going to make it nice and big. Don't look. Don't look. Lots of bees there. Lots of bees. You should face your fear. Overcome your fear of a pitcher of bees. Danny, France. Freddie's here from France. Danny's here from France. Uh, no. Alondro, do I have a lot of fans who swarmed around me? No. My YouTube channel is pretty small. Less than 15,000 viewers. Maybe on Instagram, I am approaching 340,000, I think, followers. But uh, no. I don't think that will ever happen. Yeah, look at this, Jose. Hey, Jose. Um, Jorge, sorry, Jorge. Can I say the police swarmed into the house searching for the criminal? Oh, yeah, that works. That's actually a really good sentence. Mogadishu's in the house. Somalia, welcome. Looking through the chat dangling <laughs> that's a good one hey that's a good advanced verb mark let's do it right i don't have any pictures of dangling but maybe i could look up one. Oh, let's see if i can do that so dangling is a lot like hanging let's see what happens if i google search dangling the dangling modifier that is too much grammar um, let's pull up a picture really quickly here. Ooh, make sure they're all family friendly. Why are these all shoes? Um, I was thinking when I first heard dangling, dangling from a cliff. Okay, that's it. Oh my gosh. We just did heights yesterday. Uh, last week, I'm sorry. We just did heights last week. So let me see if I can share this here. Dangling. It's a good one to know. And I think I am sharing. No, I'm not. Um, but I would like to. Maybe I shouldn't have, Mark, maybe I should not have talked about dangling. It's a good one, though. Uh, bear with me. Bear with me. Are we sharing dangling now? Yeah, see. Okay, there we go. We got a couple people dangling from a cliff. Again, if you are scared of heights, watch out. So hanging, dangling. So if you know hanging, if you know hanging, dangling might have a little movement to it. How about earrings? People who wear earrings, they might hang down from their ears but they could dangle a little bit when they move their head. So Mark, good one. Hope that one helped. Maybe I should stick to the script. Harry, he's from Indonesia. He is a channel member. If you would like to become a channel member, we are going to do a members only chat in a little while. Um, 
there's some bonus English lessons. One already from it, uh, from New York. And I'm going to be doing a members video where I answer questions from members about New York. Natalia and Tanya, I've already asked some. No, no, I am not live on uh, from New York. On Wednesday, there will be a live recorded video of me walking through Times Square on YouTube. It's actually already on Facebook, but all right. Oh my God, Jeremy Lowe? I know this guy. <laughs> this, is, this is a friend I went to high school with. Yeah. Hockey dangle. Yeah. That's a move in hockey. Hope your son is doing well, by the way. I think he's playing hockey. That's awesome. Hello from Poland. Welcome back to the lesson. Let's go. Uh, Jeremy being in the, the chat threw me off a little bit. Like, wait a second. I know that guy. All right. So the next one. We just talked about Swarm, talked about Beehive, we talked about Beekeeper. We talked about how the police could swarm, but we haven't talked about chip. Now, I think this is a great verb. You could use this in a couple different ways, but of course, it can be used as a noun because we like to do things the hard way in English. So Ukraine's in the house. Hope you're doing well in Ukraine. Welcome. All right, so chip. I'm going to make this picture a little bigger because we have a lot of chips in English. A lot of nouns, a lot of things that could be called chips. So potato chips. There is a picture of potato chips in that picture. If you go to England, you might hear those things called crisps, but here in the good old United States, we call those things potato chips. In the middle, there's another type of chip, chocolate chips. Those are little pieces of chocolate. And in the middle, those are chocolate chip cookies. All the way to the other side, we have poker chips. Now, I don't gamble. I rarely gamble. I don't like losing money. But if you go to a casino in the United States, they are legal in some states, and you play poker, you might get those little things. We call them poker chips in English. And at the bottom is a microchip. Now, I'm not a scientist. I don't know how those work, but I know they are in computers. They are probably in our phones and they make stuff happen. Microchips. So we have a lot of different kinds of chips in English, but it can be a verb. So I have a sentence for you with nouns though. So let's practice this one with nouns. Chip can be a noun. Potato chips, chocolate chips, microchips, poker chips, but it can be a verb. So if you look at that picture, that is a person playing golf. Do you play golf? That is how you can ask someone if they play golf. Do you play golf? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Do you play hockey? Do you play? But you could take out the verb play and just say, hey, do you golf? Do you golf? Do you play golf? Do you golf? It's, it's all the same. You could chip the golf ball into the hole from a short distance. So we also call that a chip shot. So if you're playing golf, that person has a club in their hand or in their hands. Both of their hands are on the club. And if they are a short distance from the hole, not long, short, really close to the hole, you could say they chipped the ball into the hole. It's just a, a little tiny, tiny shot 
It doesn't take a lot of strength. Let's read that one more time. You could chip the golf ball into the hole from a short distance. That is a chip shot. And of course, English. We have another way that you can use chip as a verb. When you chip away, chip away. When you chip away at something, you slowly remove something or you slowly finish something. I'll say that one more time. Chip away. When you chip away at something, you slowly remove something or slowly finish something. Take a look at that picture. Sorry, podcast people. You can't see that picture. But in the picture, there is something that I would call a block of ice. And people have hammers and they are chipping away at that ice block. They are making it smaller. How about this sentence right here? You could chip away at a large block of ice. You could do that. Like physically. Hammer, chipping away. Small. You're taking away small things at a time. Okay. But how about this? What if you have a lot of English homework? You don't have to do it physically. How about this? Maybe you have a lot of homework and it's due on Friday, but today is Monday. You aren't going to wait until the last minute to do that homework. You're going to do a little bit at a time. We also use chip away for that. How about this sentence? A couple sentences here. You may have a lot of English homework, but you could chip away at it over the next couple days. You will slowly get it done over small amounts of time. Chip away. How about this? I just thought of this. Okay. See how many, um, maybe we got, maybe we have some single guys in the chat. Please let me know if you are a single guy. Don't have a girlfriend. You don't have a wife, but you have your eye on somebody. You want to get a date with them. But maybe you don't think they like you too much. You could chip away at them. You know, every day, say something nice. Give them a compliment. And over time, you may chip away and they might like you. So you slowly try to get somebody to like you. You can chip away at them. Hope that helps. Chip. It's a tough one. Tough one. Um, You could chip away. I don't know. Shafe, I don't know. You could chip away. Um, You could chip away wood for the stove. You know what? I would use a different verb for that. And I would say chop. Yeah. So chip away. It seems like a lot of work. If you would chip away at the wood, I think you would chop it instead. So chop is one motion and it's usually a lot harder. But my brother has a wood stove and the way he heats his house in the winter is with wood. So he starts chopping wood in the spring, really, for the next winter. Yeah, but he does chip away at it. He doesn't cut the wood all at once. This is getting confusing. In English, we also use cords for the amount of wood. I don't have a wood stove. I don't know how much that is. But maybe my brother uses two cords of wood to heat his house each winter. He's not going to chop all of that wood at once. He will chip away at it over the next few months. Hope that helps. But yeah, I don't you you could. You could. But my mood. Are you in the chat? Put it in the uh put it in the um form. 
I'll get it. I'll get it. Chip away. Postpone? No. No. Um, postpone means to put something off. That's an English phrasal verb. So let's say you had a picnic on Saturday, but then it rains. So you would have to postpone that to a later date, maybe Sunday. Oh, we have to postpone the picnic because of the weather. We will have the picnic a day later instead. So yeah, chip away and postpone. Not, not so much. Yeah, I used to read the chat a lot. The chat is getting so big. That's why we have the form. So check the, put your question in the form and I promise I will get to it. Thailand, what's going on? Wait, Emmanuel, you don't like to chip away at your English schedule? You like to do it all at once? Okay. All right. All right, let's do it. Back to the lesson. I think the next verb that can be kind of difficult is scratch. And this is another verb, it's a thing you do, that can also be a noun. But I want to talk about the verb first. Okay? Verb first. Where's my... Okay. Now, to talk about scratch, we have to talk about itch first. Because you often scratch an itch. At the bottom, an itch is when your skin doesn't feel good. So you might scratch it with your fingernail. It doesn't matter what language you speak. Your skin has itched at one time or another, I think. It's hard to describe, but this is your skin. This is the top of my hand. And maybe you just, oh. that's an that's an itch. And I am scratching it. So maybe my hand itches right here. I am going to scratch it. There is no way you can see that on the podcast. So let me read this for you. An itch is when your skin doesn't feel good. So you might scratch it with your fingernails. The tips of your fingers are your fingernails. Those are my fingernails. My fingernails are pretty short. So hopefully we now know itch and we know now one way to use scratch. You might scratch an itch on your face, which I am doing right now. Hope that helps. English, you gotta love it. We also have something called a head scratcher. And that is when something doesn't make sense. And you can see that person in the picture. Yeah, she clearly seems a little confused. A head scratcher is something you can't understand. You find confusing. You can't figure out. A head scratcher. Why some people? Would put pineapple on pizza is a total head scratcher. Huh? What? You don't understand it. How can people put pineapple on pizza? It's a lot of peas. How can people put pineapple on pizza? It's a head scratcher. I don't get it. I don't mind. I don't mind pineapple on pizza. I do eat it sometimes. I don't know if errone is still here, but that probably makes him really mad. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at this. Shafe, my back is itchy. Could you please scratch my back? That's a good feeling, isn't it? When somebody scratches your back. Not too hard. We are going to talk about a scratch in a minute. A scratch can be, it can be a noun. So you can scratch somebody's back, but you might leave a scratch on their back. Uh, right. 
<laughs> says, right? Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. I did go to Little Italy. I just walked through Little Italy in New York. I was with my family. We didn't film anything there, but it was fun. We almost got some fettuccine Alfredo, a real Italian dish. Fettuccine Alfredo. Just kidding. That's, that's an American dish. Fettuccine Alfredo. Oh. Wait, wait. Okay. So Harry from Indonesia. Pineapple on a burger? Is that what you're talking about? That sounds good. That's not a head scratcher to me. Like, hmm? Why would somebody do that? No. That makes sense. Pineapple on a burger. Hmm. Even for the vegetarians in the audience, it could be a veggie burger, right? Pony. Hey, welcome. She is from Las Vegas. Uh, originally from Thailand, but she lives in... <laughs> All right. Um, Aaron says he loves Alfredo. Yeah, I watched a video with a real Italian woman. And she said, yeah, in Italy, we don't serve fettuccine Alfredo, but some Italians make it at their house when they don't have anything better in their cabinet. Adi's here. Adi the tie. Hope you're doing well. Hit a party with an Italian guy. That sounds fun. All right, let's do it. Back to the lesson. We are talking about head scratchers. Oh, why would you put pineapple on a pizza? Come on. It's not bad. Oh, I saw Tunisia was in the house, by the way. Tunisia. Yeah. I don't know if you know Miss English teacher. She's great. She's from Tunisia too. And Morocco. Not too, not, not too far away. Tunisia and Morocco. Kind of both in... Northern Africa, sort of close. Poland, hope you're doing well. Poland's in the house. Okay, so we're talking about head scratchers. Yeah, I don't have a lot of hair. Don't have a lot of hair, my mood. Um, scratch here. Another thing you could scratch, another gambling term. I'm not a big gambler. Gambling scares me. But in the United States, we do have something called scratch tickets. And that is where you go probably into a gas station. You buy these for maybe a dollar or two. You scratch off and then you lose your money. Scratch tickets. There's a sentence at the bottom I would like to read. Some people scratch off scratch tickets to try to win money. Yes, it is gambling. Some people scratch off scratch tickets to try to win money. Gambling. Scratch tickets. But scratch can be a noun. Yeah. So we were talking about scratching a back earlier. If you do it, in a hard way, you could leave a scratch on their back. And in that picture, you can see one, two, three, four scratches. Cats. Maybe they scratch you with their claws. If you scratch your skin too hard, you may scratch yourself. You can have a scratch on your skin. Hope that helps. A scratch. You can scratch, it can be a verb, or you can leave a scratch. That is a noun. Hope that helps. And the last thing about scratch is you can learn English from scratch. So from zero, you might hear that. If you know nothing about guitar, you learn it from scratch. So knowing nothing, that means learning it from scratch. English. Maybe in the chat, you have learned English from scratch. 
If your parents didn't speak English, you may have learned English from scratch, from zero. So if you grew up and your parents were speaking English sometimes at home, that might not be from scratch because you were born with a little bit of English. Maybe you had to get better on your own. But if your parents didn't speak English at all, and you didn't learn English at school at all, and you started learning English as an adult, you probably learned it from scratch, from zero. You had no English before. Hope that helps. All right, what I'm going to do is check the form. There are four questions. There are four questions in the form. Let's see if I can pull this up here. Boom. Maybe I should read these first. Let's see. Just to make sure. Hey, Brent's fan, Mahmood. Okay. Mahmood has the first one. The Brent's fan. I have a fan from Mauritania. All right. Let's see. I'm going to pull this up here. How do I do this? There it is. All right. Mahmood. Let's read his question here. I didn't read it first. I know, I know Mahmood. It's going to be clean. He's not going to swear. So yes, Mahmood is from Mauritania and he said, Brent, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, Mahmood. Tell me how it was in New York. I hope you had a wonderful time. No questions so far. I'm just going to enjoy the live stream. Thanks for your time, teacher. Mahmood, thank you so much. Very kind of you. Yeah, so I spent this week, we have a week vacation from school. We have a week off in February. We call it February vacation. So my daughter, my wife, and myself went to New York. We left on Sunday from our home, and then we arrived back at home on Thursday, and we had a good time. I think staying in New York for that amount of time was perfect for me. I don't think I would like to live there. I don't think I would like to work there. It's just a little too busy for me. And I try, I try to stay hydrated. We take a real quick sip of water and play this to remind you all to, to like and subscribe and, and all that good stuff. If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. All right, so... Don't forget, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I like to stay hydrated, which means I, I drink a lot of water. Finding a bathroom in New York City is not always easy. So I didn't like that part of it. Like, hey, where's where's the bathroom here? So it would and it takes a long time to get to other places. A half an hour, 45 minutes. New York City is a big, not big like this, not just like that with tall buildings, big wide. So it was fun, but I didn't want to stay there too much longer. Yeah, and New York, Madi says, yeah, New York is pretty expensive too. But where I live in Maine, eating is more expensive than in New York which is kind of sad where I live. Bangladesh is in the house. I did go to little Bangladesh in New York. That will be out on the channel pretty soon. So within the next couple weeks, I always release the videos on YouTube first. So you may want to subscribe over at YouTube. Speak English with this guy. Yeah, um, Aroni. I know he went to New York City this summer. He said, um, yeah, th he, I think he's talking about me. Yeah. I mean, going to the bathroom is, in, is important. You know, I want a bathroom nearby. That just might be the old man in me, but like, come on. And I don't mind paying. If I had to pay a dollar, just have a bathroom around. Not easy to do. Not so easy to do. You know what I want to do here? Members, 
Thank you so much for being channel members. For the next five minutes, I would like to just put on a members chat. So if you do have a, a question and you're a member, just leave it in the chat. I will check it in a minute. Next question here. Oh, let me make sure. Is it? Oh, whatever. Hopefully there's no, hopefully there's no swearing in it here. The next one. This is question number two. Only four questions here, though. Nizam, he is from Pakistan. Oh, I'm proud of you, sir. Well, that's that's nice. Nazim, Nizam. I hope I say your name correctly. No question. Just proud of me. Pakistan. I've heard it's great to be a guest in Pakistan. So I've seen people who visit Pakistan and people will not let you pay for anything because you are a guest there. I would want to pay, but I would love to visit Islamabad, Lahore. Yeah, I think there's another big city I'm forgetting in Pakistan, but sounds like it would be great there. Ukraine, hope you're doing okay. Yeah, New York City is the biggest. Los Angeles is the second biggest. And Chicago is the third biggest. Philadelphia and Houston are fourth and fifth. I think Houston might be fourth now. I think it used to be used to be uh Houston, but I think Houston's four and Philadelphia is fifth. I've never been to Houston. I've never been to Los Angeles either. I've been to San Francisco. Okay, let's check another question here in the form. If I can find it. There it is. It's from Freddie the Frenchie. I know Freddie the Frenchie. Let's go. I won't read this one first. I know he is not going to swear. He's not going to get me in trouble. Can I be swatted by a police swarm? Mm. What's the real meaning of the word SWAT? This was almost on my list. Okay, so let's talk about SWAT. Freddie, great question. Okay, so let me, hey Siri, set my timer for four minutes. I don't want to forget, I don't want to forget um, members, let everybody back into the chat. Um, cause I do that sometimes I forget. Okay. SWAT. Now police officers, like the really good police officers might be on the SWAT team. So that's an adjective there, a SWAT team and what a, a SWAT team is a noun, but SWAT is being used as an adjective there. A SWAT team does very special missions for the police department. Maybe they need to go into a house and get a criminal. So there's the SWAT team. But when you use a verb SWAT, it's like to hit quickly. And when I hear SWAT, I think SWAT a fly. So if there was a fly buzzing around here, bzz, buzz, that's a verb there, you might just SWAT it away. Or if, if a friend says something to you, I don't do this, but you may have a friend, you just like swat the back of their head. If they say something mean to you, just in a playful way, come on, don't do that. Just a light, a light hit. That's a swat. That's a swat. Oh yeah, Bangladesh. I do know about Bangladesh. Where is this? Where is this? Yes. Dhaka. Yeah. I would love to visit. Um, in my, in my lesson, I also, in English, we say Bangladeshi, but we also say Bengali. So the language is Bengali, but yeah. All right, um, let's check one more in the chat, and then we will check some questions from members. Sylvana from Uruguay. Hope you're doing well, doing well in Uruguay. Is chip away the same like turning a big sheet of paper into a very small piece of paper? That is a good question. Oh, I didn't put that up. I didn't put that up so you can see it. I would say that you might tear. That's the verb I think I would use with paper. 
I'm not sure if I would chip away at paper. So you might tear apart. That's the, let's see, I have a tissue here. It's clean. It's a clean tissue. I was trying to balance my laptop here. Um, but like, you could say um, I'm tearing up. Yeah, that's the phrasal verb I might use for that tissue. Nice little mess for me to pick up later. Yeah, I would say probably tear up. Yeah, tear up the paper, I think. Now, Freddie's wondering, do I know why New York City is called the Big Apple? No, I don't. I don't. Um, but maybe like the Big Apple is the the whole thing, the whole piece. So it's like it because it is the biggest city in the United States, it's like kind of the most important. So like the big boss or something. Don't know. I don't know. All right, let's take a look at um, some members' questions in here um, as a thank you to all of the channel members. Mega. Something just fell. Mega from India. Hope you're doing well. All right, Harry. Because you showed the guitar picture, um, let me bring that back up. Because you showed the guitar pick, ooh, and also a guitar pick is a little plastic thing you might hit the strings of a guitar with. Oh, okay. All right. So I will put everybody back for members, but I do want to still answer any questions channel members might have. There you go. Everybody's back. Um, I wonder how you describe the way of playing the guitar in English, Brent. I don't know. I would just say, oh man, that per person's playing the guitar well. That person's playing the guitar not so well. They're playing it pretty badly. I don't know. When you're describing verbs, we use something called adverbs and they usually end in L-Y. Um, well is not an adverb that ends in ly but yeah yeah she plays the guitar well i hope that i hope that helps um they could also be picking okay here's a couple advanced verb this is maybe what harry means they could be picking at the guitar or they could be strumming the guitar some more advanced verbs so picking small movements strumming would be longer movements, longer notes. Hope that helps. Okay, Madi. When the sign appears, it looks like we are high-class members. No question so far. Yes, the high-class member. Thank you. Madi has been a channel member for a long time, probably three years, almost three years. He was one of my first channel members back in, july maybe of 2020 so thank you so much williams he's been around a long time too okay good question did you see any rats in that city that is famous for having so many rats and cockroaches my family and i were talking about that on the subway one day i think it was our last day there or our second to last day there and no we were looking for rats I did not see any rats. I did not see any cockroaches. I did not see any bed bugs in my hotel. So New York, I thought was very clean. The subway was very clean. There were, I think in the video that will come out about Times Square, there are two I filmed in Times Square. I mentioned how there is always somebody working for the city cleaning up. So it was very clean. When you go to New York City and you stay in a hotel or you eat a meal in a restaurant, there is an added tax. You have to pay extra money. And I think that goes to keeping the city clean. So I found it to be very clean there. Good question. No way. Aroni. You're coming back this summer? All right, we'll have to talk about that. Let me know if you're coming back this summer. 
All right, just checking through, making sure if there are any other pony. Are there many Thai restaurants in New York City? Have you tried? I heard they're expensive though. Okay, so there will be a video coming out where I visit Thai Town. Audie the Thai, another longtime channel member, asked me to go to Thai Town. I did it. Pony, if you're a gold member, I, I already sent a video in our volley space, so check it out. If not, just ask me in Discord. Just ask me in Discord. I don't want to spoil it yet. Um, as a European, do you prefer the U.S. or England to visit? Williams, he's in Argentina. You know what I prefer? South America. Yeah, I'm hoping to try to get to Brazil next year. We'll see how it goes. If I can get to Argentina also... That would be great, but we'll see. All right. Any more members? I think not. Hang on. Two. Um, yeah, Brent, that's what I meant. Okay. Could you type in the chat those two words? Um, strum, S-T-R-U-M. Strum would be the longer one. And I think pick is just P-I-C. I don't know. I don't know how to spell guitar pick. Is it just P-I-C? But I put them in the chat. Check, check. Don't take my word for it with pick. So in English, if you're not sure of something, you can say, correct me if I'm wrong. You could say that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think pick is P-I-C-K. Or you could say, hey, don't take my word for it. But I think pick is spelled P I C K. A couple ways that you could um, use pick, uh, use uh, something you're not sure of. All right. How did you manage not to get lost in New York City? It's so big. Uh, yeah, Freddie. Um, I used a couple apps. Google Maps was actually pretty helpful most of the time. So I just used Google Maps. I didn't get completely lost in New York ever. I might have been unsure a couple times of where I was going, but I figured it out pretty quickly. All right. Um, do I have a WhatsApp gra a group? No. I only have a members group, and we try to keep it small. Um, there's a Facebook subscribers group. There's a YouTube channel members group. Uh, it's less than a hundred people and just chat and discord sometimes, but the group is small. All right. I think that's it, right? Let's do it. I don't know. Netta looks like a lot of hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's move on with the lesson. Enough chatting, more English. The next advanced verb we might want to talk about is crave, crave. So when you want something really badly, you crave it. You may be craving English knowledge. You may want to learn English. So you're craving that feeling of being able to speak. You know what I'm craving right now? cake. I'm almost always craving cake. When you want something really bad, crave, not cave, not where bats live, crave. When you want something really badly, you crave it. How about this? Right now, I'm craving some cake. I could always eat cake. Look at that. I, I'm sorry. If you haven't eaten in a little while, if it's almost lunchtime or dinner time where you are watching, look at that sugary cake. Yeah, I am craving that cake right now for sure. Scribble is the next one. We are going to talk about two verbs here, scribble and scrawl. Both have something to do with writing, but both are slightly different. So let's talk about scribble first. Scribbling. Scribbling means you write something, 
but it doesn't look like anything. You might scribble on your desk if you are bored. You may scribble on paper during a phone call. So there might be a picture there. There might be like the same word over and over. But when you scribble, you don't really care about the finished product. It usually looks something like that in the picture. Just a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of nothing. Little kids, when they are first starting to learn how to color or draw, they might scribble on their paper. Just scribble. It, it doesn't produce anything. It's just a bunch of lines. Now, scrawl, it's a little different because when you scrawl something, you probably do want to write a word. Maybe you want to draw a picture, but you do it quickly and you don't really care how it looks. Here's the definition for you. Scrawl means you actually try to write something, but it's messy, done quickly, and you don't care how it looks. Here's an example sentence for you. She scrawled her name on the piece of paper. So let's go back to that actor at the Broadway show. If you're just joining us, I talked about a Broadway show ending and the actors came out to meet their fans. Well, maybe one of the actors was in a bad mood. One of the fans said, hey, can I get your autograph? Yeah. So they wrote their autograph on the piece of paper. They wrote their name, but they didn't really care about it. They just scrawled it. They did it very quickly. It was really messy, but it, it's there. So scribble and scrawl are sometimes used interchangeably, but there, there is a small difference. So I hope that that's clear. How about this? Do you know what graffiti is? If not, I'll put a picture up of it. Yeah, it's just usually words. Sometimes it's art, but it's written in a place it probably shouldn't be written on, like a bathroom wall or the wall of a city. Graffiti is usually illegal. He scrawled graffiti on the bathroom wall. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. The next one, float. We are going to use float as a verb and as a noun. Excuse me. So the 